The United States has been working to create modern multi-role aircraft capable of flying at supersonic speeds for decades. However, the creation of advanced airships has not always been a priority. Since the 1960s, the Soviet Army presented a new armored weapon to the world, among which are the well-known T-62 and T-64, as well as a 23mm self-propelled air defense gun, Shoka. In addition, the 12.7mm DSHK machine guns, a favorite of the Vietnamese guerrillas, could stand up well to the American Trojans, T-28, designed specifically for a war in this region. All the technical innovations forced Washington to reconsider its course and begin to develop a low-cost attack aircraft capable of effectively countering the ground threat. Thus, the idea of creating one of the most famous American ground attack aircraft of the 20th century was born, Thunderbolt II, which we'll talk about today. This is military news. Let's go. The A-10 Thunderbolt II is a single-seat jet aircraft whose main task was to provide air support for ground troops, both in local wars and in the big war in the European theater of war. It was named after one of the most successful fighters of World War II, the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, though pilots affectionately called it Beardface. The history of its creation begins more than a half century ago, together with the launch of the AX program, Attack Experimental. During this program, only Northrop and the Fairchild Republic were chosen out of 21 aircraft companies, each of which presented its prototype. Both machines were then tested in which each flew more than 100 hours and fired about 20,000 rounds. During the testing, it turned out that the Northrop sample, called the YA-9A, was lighter, more maneuverable, had a high-positioned wing, and engines by Lycoming engines. The second project, called YA-10A on the contrary, had a low-lying wing and flared vertical tail, and engines for it were provided by General Electric. It differed from its competitor by having a larger fuel tank and simpler maintenance. In terms of combat survivability, it was about on par with both attack aircraft. Although many experts were leaning towards the first competitor, in 1973, the Project Fairchild Republic was declared the winner, receiving a contract to develop 10 pre-production units at a cost of $159 million. The prototype series was later reduced to six units, which were launched just two years later. The model was produced until 1984, after which it underwent various modifications and improvements. During this time, 715 planes rolled off the assembly line, of which today 283 C modification units remain in service. The cost of one is estimated at 18 to 19 million dollars. The aircraft is 16 and a half meters long and has a wingspan of 17.5. It was made according to the classical aerodynamic scheme, has a three spar wing consisting of a rectangular center section in which were the fuel tanks and two trapezoidal consoles. The wing tips were bent downward, which increased the flight range by 8%. The semi-monocoque fuselage was made of aluminum alloy, which were noted for their high corrosion resistance. An important feature is its high survivability. According to the designer's claims, it could fully function if two spars were damaged and retain flight control if one of the keels or one of the stabilizer consoles was lost. Such reliabilities due to the use of one and a half inches of titanium armor, armored windshield, and a cockpit in the form of a bath made of titanium armor plates. Thanks to the use of these innovations, the attack aircraft is capable of withstanding a 23mm Shoka missile hit. Thunderbolt 2 has a three-pillar undercarriage with a front strut that allows for takeoff and landing even on field airfields. And the wheels, which protrude one-third of the nacelle outline, facilitate emergency landings when the landing gear is retracted. Initially, the Bearden could not boast of powerful equipment. It had primitive barometric altimeters, an old-generation radar warning system, AN-ALR-46, and other standard sensors. However, as enemy systems improved, so did the modernization of our hero. It was supplemented with such innovations as inertial navigation system, ASN-141, providing operation in difficult weather conditions, radio altimeter, APN-194, short-range and long-range navigation radio systems, Tacken and Loren, direction finder, DF-301EDA, modern radios, type 618M, and more. 
Among other things, the Pave Penny system was installed, which could detect targets illuminated by a laser mounted on the ground or other aircraft at a distance of up to 24 kilometers. However, it lasted about 10 years and then was dismantled. Twice the designers tried to introduce into the attack aircraft a lantern container optoelectric navigation and targeting system which would ensure flight at extremely low altitudes under night conditions. But this idea turned out to be too expensive and complicated. In addition, the cockpit was equipped with an ACES-2 ejection seat, which allowed leaving the aircraft even at zero speed and altitude. The designers did not stop here and in the 70s tried to implement the idea of a night all-weather attack aircraft. This model was to be equipped with a new airborne radar and a weather radar station. It was capable of performing such tasks as mapping, detecting small ground targets, and flying in terrain avoidance mode. Of course, in addition, there was a whole set of sensors and indicators. Another important difference was the presence of a co-pilot seat. However, these ambitious plans remained at the level of the project and as an all-weather aircraft chosen more powerful F-15 and F-16. In the 90s, another modification of the attack aircraft appeared, designated as OA-10A, designed for advanced air guidance and search and rescue missions. And in 2006, the developers gave the already exhausted machine a second life and the letter C on the end. The model received upgraded avionics, POTUS technology, and a reinforced wing design. The last unmanned modification is called the A-10 PCAS and is currently under development. Warthog was able to reach speeds of around 850 kilometers an hour and climb to heights above 13,500 meters. Two turbojet engines, TF-34 GE-100 of well-known General Electric Company, provided such performances. Interestingly, they were installed under a new scheme in which each was placed in a separate nacelle on the sides of the tail section of the fuselage. This scheme has several advantages, including reduced radar and thermal signature, reduced likelihood of foreign objects entering the air intake, plus more convenient maintenance. The Thunderbolt II can rightly be called one of the most powerful attack aircraft of the 20th century. Eleven weapon mounting points carry guided air-to-surface missiles Maverick with television targeting, AGM-65A, or self-defense AIM-9 Sidewinder. The Beardmaker can carry various types of bombs, such as the Freefall MK-82 and MK-84 or incendiary BLU-16 bombs, different series of CBU bombs, 52, 58, 71, are also possible. But the main advantage of the A-10 is the 30mm 7-gun GAU-8A Avenger, which was installed in 1970. It had a rate of fire of 4,000 rounds per minute and a maximum allowable rate of 10 2-second bursts with a 1-minute air cooling in between. The gun is externally hydraulically powered and has no spring ammunition feeding system. The use of aluminum ammunition pellets increased the ammunition capacity by 30%, 1,350 rounds. With such an arsenal, the attack aircraft can attack a tank at 100 to 150 meters from a distance of 1,800 meters and unarmored targets from twice as far away. As for the combat experience, the Bearded was able to prove itself during the Persian Gulf War. According to American pilots, these machines destroyed more than a thousand Iraqi tanks, 2,000 other pieces of military equipment, and 1,200 pieces of artillery. Not only did they show the ability to stand up to enemy tanks and smaller armored vehicles, but they were also able to perform unconventional tasks. For example, it was these aircraft that were able to destroy a mobile Scud missile launcher that the heavy Strike Eagle F-15E and Aardvark F-111 were after for a long time. In addition, one of these ships engaged in a battle with the Soviet Mi-8 helicopter and managed to win. This is not the only operation in which our hero was used. Subsequently, Thunderbolt II flew over the skies of Yugoslavia, Iraq, and Afghanistan. But despite its widespread popularity, the plane is in service only in its homeland. Of course, in the early years, many countries were interested in it, such as England, Norway, and South Korea. In addition, Washington planned to send a batch of specially developed A-10s to Latin America. They were to be used there to combat drug trafficking. However, foreign interest in the development rather quickly subsided due to the reluctance of countries to buy highly specialized aircraft, and even at a decent price. In conclusion, we'd like to add that the A-10 was one of the most reliable planes of its time. It's amazing that even after so many years, it's still in service. 
I'll be very interested to see what machine will replace this old man. And what about you? I'm waiting for your answers in the comments below this video. As usual, don't forget to like and subscribe. There's a lot of interesting reviews.